Focus right, Scarlet 2i2 versus the Comica Link Flex AD5. Ooh. So you've got an XLR microphone and you're trying to figure out the best way to connect that to your computer system through USB, but there are so many different options that are out there. Well, whether you're a podcaster, a live streamer, or a content creator, the probable one that has been recommended most to you has been this one right here. This is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. However, Comica have just released their all new Linkflex AD5. You can see that it's very, very similarly sized, but how does it compare? Well, let's take these two over to the testing lab. And welcome to the new testing lab. Now, full disclosure here, Comica did send this unit to us for a review. They are not sponsoring this video and we really are just going to have to give it our honest opinions on whether we like this unit or not, or what they could possibly improve in the future. Now, the Comica Linkflex AD5 is a phenomenal device so far. I've been able to test it for about a week and a half to two weeks right now, and I've been using it as my primary audio interface that brings in different kinds of microphones. So you've got a full LCD screen here, which gives you all the information uh, of what's happening on your microphone itself. Over here, you have a main mix volume button, which controls how much volume is going from the outputs to your computer system over USB. And then you've got a mode button here, and the mode button changes from recording to streaming. Uh, essentially, the record basically means that your channels left and right are going to your computer system as left and right independent channels. However, when you set it to stream, it basically turns these into uh, a combined mono channel. On the front of the unit, you have your two XLR combo inputs. You have your two gain knobs here, which allows you to control the gain for each of those inputs. And then you have independent 48 volt power and then you have the instrument section here, which basically enables high Z. So if you're gonna connect an instrument to your line input, you're gonna enable that instrument button. Over here, you have a headphone port, so you can monitor your uh, output. And then you have two buttons here, the direct and loop back. And then on the back of the unit, we have our power button, which switches between English and Chinese. We have our USB-C power port. We have two USB-C connections for independent computer systems to connect to this unit. We have a three and a half millimeter output, a three and a half millimeter input, as well as another headphone monitoring port. And last but not least, you have your left right line output so you can send the signal to a set of speakers or monitoring mixers or other cool jazzy things. And there, you've got a tiny little reset hole. Both units support up to two XLR or line input devices. Now in terms of the inputs, both of them do have two XLR in line input combination ports, and they both have independent gain control knobs on each of the units. Uh, and they also support 48 volt phantom power, which is used for microphones and devices that require that 48 volt of power to make the device work, such as condenser microphones. However, one of the big differences here is that the 2i2 from Focusrite does not have independent independent control on each one of those ports. So that is, you can either turn 48 volt phantom power on or off for both ports. So in terms of the 48 volt phantom power control, I really gotta say, Comica really did something great here because you have independent control over that power between port one and port two. Now, if you have instruments such as electric guitars, keyboards, uh, or other amplified devices, and you wanna send those to each of these units, they both have that quarter inch line input as well as high Z compatibility. So if you want to do that, you have to just click on the instrument button on either of the ports. So both of these are equal in that way. In terms of using each of these XLR interfaces on your computer system for using any type of uh, digital audio workstation or DAW software, uh, they both work extremely well and they both work the exact same way. So they actually have this thing called direct monitoring. So when you have direct monitoring enabled, it means that whatever you're uh, outputting from your ports one and two goes directly into your headset for zero latency audio monitoring. Now, what if you wanna connect your smartphone to your computer system and you don't wanna necessarily connect it directly, you'd like to connect it to your XLR interface device? Well, unfortunately, the Focusrite does not have that feature unless you use one of your XLR line input ports. The Comica AD5 actually has a three and a half millimeter input on the back of the port. Uh, which allows you to connect your phone directly to the unit. So that is another input 
for this unit. Now, one cool feature about the AD5 is that it has a 3000 milliamp hour battery built into it, which means that you do not need USB power to utilize this device. So this would be used in places where, let's say for example, you're on the go and you want to connect your microphones uh, to a set of speakers, right? So if you've got an XLR microphone and you wanna connect that and you wanna connect the two line outputs of the left and our stereo signals to an amplifier of some sort and send that broadcast out. You can do that without requiring a computer system or a USB powered device to power this unit. Now, not everybody's going to use this feature because for the most part, you're going to be connecting your computer system to this device. And if that's the case, you have to keep one thing in mind that the battery is in there uh, and you can utilize it using just one USB cable. So it connects to USB one to your computer system. However, in order for you to charge that battery or use it, you have to have a secondary USB-C cable connected to the power port on the back of this unit. And that differs from the Scarlett 2i2, where the Scarlett has one single USB-C port on the back, and once you connect that to your computer system, it's powering the unit, and it's also the data connection for the unit itself. All right, let's now get to the audio testing and comparison between the AD5 and the 2i2. To each of these units, I have a separate microphone connected, and these microphones Phones are the Rode NT1A, which is a condenser microphone requiring 48 volt phantom power. Okay, so this is the audio coming from one of these two units. Can you tell which one it is? Is it the Comica Linkflex 85 or is it the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2? Hmm, can you tell the difference? And now this is the audio coming from the other unit. Is it the Comica 85 or is it the Scarlett 2i2? Can you tell the difference between these two? So which microphone did you guess which was the first one? Well, here it is. The first microphone that I sampled was the Comica Linkflex 85, and the second microphone was the Scarlett 2i2. Now, one of the really cool features about this Comica 85 is that it has a three equalizer setting as well as reverb settings, and that's all built in through the digital signal processing on the unit itself. So for example, this is the natural sound or basically the general sound that's coming from the microphone through this interface to the computer system. However, I can go ahead and enable three different equalizer settings. One is called deep, another one's called natural, and the other one is called bright. And on top of those three different equalizer settings, I can add some reverb, either in the size of a room, a stage, or a hall. So this sound here is the natural sound that's coming from this unit. However, I can go ahead and enable the equalizer by clicking on the effects button. And now this is the deeper sound. So this is something more of a broadcasty tone where the bass or the lower frequencies of my voice are enhanced. And if I'd like to go ahead, I can go ahead and click on natural and this will boost the mid tones a little bit. And this is used for more sometimes like podcasting uh, where you don't always want that lower voice tones coming through the broadcast sometimes because people listen to it in audio in the audios in cars and you don't want your voice droning or if you have a really low voice you can uh, brighten up your audio by selecting the bright option so you can hear the three differences between the different equalizer settings on this unit now if I just make myself go back to a standard sound and then I can click on FX and hold that button down and get to the reverb setting now there are three three different reverb settings on here. There's room, stage, and hall. And essentially this goes from a small room to a medium-sized room to a larger room. And you can hear the differences here. So this is the room uh, reverb setting and you can hear some of that echo and tone. Sounds like I'm inside of a room. This here is the stage reverb setting, which makes it sound like a little bit of a larger space that I'm in. Uh, and you can now hear a greater amount of reverb. And this is the hall setting. This makes it sound like I'm in a large church hall or a large auditorium and speaking from the stage and you can hear that echo happening. Now there are also three touch capacitive buttons to the side of the LED screen. A mute button, a denoise button, as well as an effects button. And we already went through the effects. So the mute button is actually really cool because you don't have to buy an external cough button, uh, but you just have to go ahead and hit 
Now, because of the digital signal processing that's built into the AD5, which the 2i2 does not have, the denoise function may be something that would be highly valuable to you. Imagine that you have a ventilation system or a fan going on in the background, and it can be distracting for your videos or your live streams. Now, because of the digital signal processing that's built into the AD5, which the 2i2 does not have, the denoise function may be something that would be highly valuable to you. Imagine Imagine that you have a ventilation system or a fan going on in the background. Well, it's this constant hum or noise that's in the background and it can be distracting for your videos or your live streams. Now, my studio here is actually pretty quiet. I've got a lot of sound padding and acoustic padding that stops a lot of that noise and I really don't have any source uh, sources of noise in this room other than a tiny fan on my main light, which you probably can't hear. So. In lieu of that, I'm gonna make some noise using this. This is a little fan, and let's just pretend that that is white noise happening in the background from traditional ventilation systems or fans inside of your studio. So you can go ahead and hear that background noise right now. But what the denoise button does is it kind of acts like a noise gate and it removes that base level noise from uh, the gaps in your audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the denoise button. Now you can hear that the noise in the background has been eliminated and it's going to be removed as much as possible when I am actually speaking on this video. Now in terms of pricing, the Comica AD5 comes in at almost the exact same price as the Scarlett 2i2. Whereas the Scarlett 2i2 retails for currently around 200 US dollars, the Comica AD5 will come in somewhere between 200 and 239 US dollars. Overall, I have to say, I really am impressed by this Comica LinkFlex AD5. Um, the feature set is really, really great for that price range. It actually sounds really good compared to the 2i2, as well as other XLR interfaces that are out on the market. And feature for feature, it does actually have a few extra things that you might benefit from in terms of the digital signal processing or all of the additional types of um, uh, outputs that it has on the unit itself, or maybe even the dual computer stream. Streaming. So overall, I say it's a definite plus to have this unit as an alternative. So if you are looking for the 2i2, do consider the possibility of the AD5 being in your tool or gear arsenal. Now you may be asking yourself, what kind of microphone do I need? That's probably one of the most common questions that we have been receiving a lot here at Live Streaming Pros. So if that is a question that you're looking for, then you definitely need to check out this video here where Luria talks about all the different microphones for all the different types of videos that you may be creating. So go ahead, click over there, take a look at it.